Well, welcome back to our coverage here at HP Discover. I'm Andy Bukaski from SDR News. We have Ms. Paul Muller, who is the Chief Evangelist for HP Software. And it's always a pleasure to chat and uh, see what's new and uh, check out what kind of suit you uh, bought to the event. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, well, orange one, you, I, I wish that you had worn the orange one today. I, you know, and I had a thought about it. I should have pulled it out, actually. Yeah. So my apologies for that. But I tell you what, Barcelona. We'll try and come up with something special. We'll, we'll come up with something, something special. Absolutely. Well, uh, I think that uh, one of the topics that we want to talk about is this notion of the value of connected intelligence across an enterprise and what that can mean from a business results standpoint. Yeah, look, we've been talking a bit about connected intelligence uh, and a lot of people ask me, well, what is it? And I would say that, uh, I like to sort of say that today businesses have a lot of data, a lot of information inside them. But when you think about it, they don't often glue it together. So, you know, I, I've once said to somebody, you know, you know those when you, do, you call a call center, say at a bank or at a, whatever it might be, a retailer, and you hear those words, this call will be monitored for quality of service purposes. <laughs> oh, if only they would. Exactly yes, right. If exactly only they right. Would. Exactly right. And, and the problem with that is, is that it actually is monitored in the sense it's recorded to a hard drive, stored on a computer somewhere, but guess what happens? Nothing. Unless there's a, often a lawsuit or a complaint, right, right. often that information just goes unutilized. And it's a valuable store of customer sentiment. It's a great store of training, for example. Um, it's a great store of you know effectiveness of your call center reps. Now that information is there, but it's very expensive to get at. So what happens is it becomes dark or disconnected from all the other data and information you have. And we find the same thing is true of spreadsheets, the same thing is true of Word documents, even structured machine data. For example, think about all of the information you have about power consumption that's logged inside a smart meter that's often just thrown away or disconnected from everything else. Or, or normal IT uh, pieces of equipment that, that have, have uh, thousands and thousands of log files that Logs are being spun class, off uh, automatically exactly. and uh, could be human readable except not human findable. Exactly. And, and even if you've got them, for example, you've got great clickstream information inside log files, you've got great security information. But if that's disconnected from what's happening with your customer service function, which is disconnected from what's happening with your sales function, it's really hard to work out why you had a bad sales day was actually because you were attacked, because you haven't connected them together. Right, right. Do, do you think that, I mean, previously, obviously the technology couldn't support it. Yep. But as the technology came up, do you think that the vision of the potential of this is actually being seized upon, or are people just kind of not aware? It's a little bit of both, I've got to tell I you. I, yeah. So uh, if we look at, say, something like Haven, the reason we created that platform was to be able to enable the integration of 100% of your information, human information, unstructured information, video, audio, text, um, still images, bring all of that together in conjunction with high velocity, high volume, structured information, um, as well as web semi-structured information, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to bring that all together, along with that log yeah. file information you talk about right. in one place. So certainly the platform is evolving to enable that to be a more of a reality. But having said that, as you point out, there's a lack of awareness in many cases. And I've got to tell you, there's a lack of cultural drive for what I call data-driven decision-making. There's a lot of hippos uh -huh. in organizations. Hippos being? highest paid person uh, opinion, yes, yes, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And what happens then is you get, you know, you've been in that meeting, right? Where the most senior person in the room or the, you know, the biggest exec says, I think this. And when they say, I think, what they really mean is I'm guessing this because <laughs> uh, I don't have the data, right? It's right. there somewhere, but no one's bringing it to me. Sure. And that, that cultural process of, of saying, I don't care what you think. I want to know what we know. Mm -hmm. Asking that question, how can we find out what we really know is a cultural change that I think is going to take all of us from the highest paid members of the organization right through to the rank and file, we're really going to have to drive that data-driven decision-making process. Right. Well, in, a, in its recognition of the context in which a particular piece of data has, has been gathered, uh, uh, the most obvious thing I would think would be would be social media, where a particular comment could be a positive comment or a negative content. Uh, uh, comment depending yes. upon the context. Very, very true. I think you, you give a good example. Like you know, I mean, we, in Australia, certainly my kids would say something was wicked, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. now wicked to you and me means something very different from what it would mean uh, to a younger person. Unless you're in New England, which uh, wicked does have that kind of. <laughs> so so it, it all depends. It, it, exactly right, and context yep. is king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the desire to have and make intelligent decisions. Yeah. Is this a boardroom issue or does it apply at other places in the organization? 
Well, as I was saying, I really think it is a, a matter of a cultural shift across the organisation. I, I think the boardroom, oddly enough, thinks they're making decisions with hard data. But if you've ever been inside a large, complex organisation, you'll know that a lot of the time, the way they get that final spread presentation or spreadsheet was usually as a result of somebody sticking their finger in the, right. in the air underneath them and yeah. coming to them and saying, look, this is probably what the facts are. Or making are. an assumption or trying to smooth the data. Or interpolating, exactly. Or interpolating. Exactly right. And, and so what happens is a lot of the time the execs believe they're making decisions on the basis of good, solid, accurate data. But infrequently, it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's massaged. Uh, or as you say, interpolated, or or sometimes it's anecdotal, and yeah. you'll often find people even don't worse. fact check exactly e right. Even, even worse. Yeah, so yeah. it's definitely there's a cultural shift that's required, no doubt about it. Now, one of the features of Haven is the ability to have a large number of connectors. Yes. Why is that important? Well, we talk about disconnected data being dead data, right? And if you can't connect to that data then you're, you're, you're really not going to get very far at all. So from our point of view, you need to be able to bring all the information in. So within Haven, for example, we've got 700 connectors we've enabled. Uh, and, you know, WordPerfect. Mm, hey, remember, remember WordPerfect? I, absolutely. We can read WordPerfect documents. And somebody said to me, why would you want to do that? Well, not, because they're there. You have them somewhere in your archives. And if you can't connect to them, you've, it, it's disconnected. Again, it might as well be dead or dark data. You may as well throw it away. Indeed. So it, it really is important you need to be able to get it 100% of your information. Yeah, I was recalling uh, a situation I was talking with some people that had worked with HP yep. uh, from uh, some number of years ago where, where for a period of time uh, there weren't Word documents. There was another uh, Word uh, word processing yeah, uh, system you know, that was Word perfect and you know Word and now we're seeing of course with the advent of some of the smartphones you're seeing Google Docs and and, and the, the point is is that this information as you say that you're going to get a proliferation especially at the moment with this rush of consumerization of IT mm -hmm. we're seeing all sorts of information being created in all sorts of forms. So, so a big part of, uh, of Haven of course is, is ArcSight, a yeah. part of the, of, of the family. Yeah. How does uh, data from many many sources enhance the security of an enterprise? Okay, well that's a good question because I think you've got a couple of different elements to consider here. So the first is to answer your question directly, logs and um, pattern, patterns of behavior are a really important first level indicator of fraud or a threat. So for example, somebody might badge swipe into, let's just say we're all here in Las Vegas at the moment. Uh, if I badge swipe in with my door badge into the office in Melbourne, you've got to be asking the question, well, how can Paul be in two places at once? Yes, so correlating log information like that for anomalies is an important indication. Similarly, if data is categorized, for example, if, if autonomy has detected that, for example, this JPEG is a picture of a schematic diagram for a circuit board plan, well, that might be something that's proprietary to the organization. So categorizing that as a circuit board diagram and then putting up a rule uh, inside ArcSight to say if a circuit board diagram leaves the organization and is addressed to someone who is not at our organization, if it's sent right. externally, then that should be flagged as a potential fraud. So that's an example. I wanted to counter that though, because the other thing is once you've got a big, once you have big data, once you've connected data, you've also got a big threat, right? Because it's a big target that the bad guys want to get at because they're going to want to get at your data and monetize it by selling it to other people to organize crime. And so you've got the, you've got the double threat of as you get really good at connected intelligence, you also need to get really, really good at, at security. At security. Yeah, and a lot of the time, and, and frankly, and get, get your privacy house in order too because we've got to make sure we protect our customers' data. So it really is important to make sure you're not just getting great at connecting the information, you've got to get great at protecting the information too, unfortunately. Indeed. So as uh, uh, people are thinking about their particular situation with yep. respect to the amount of data they have, how can HP help uh, them to examine that in a more structured way to, to get their, their thinking organized? And then what specific recommendations do you have where people should go to find out more about uh, uh, HP and Big Data? Well, so I mean, the word workshop gets overused in some cases, I, I think, in our industry. But I, I really do believe in this case that a Big Data workshop 
a Haven workshop is a great way to start to get some of our consultants and to spend time and understand because the word big data and, and even connected intelligence is going to get bandied around a lot. Right. But what I often find is when people say, oh, look, you know, we need Haven, you find out what they really mean is we've got too many logs. Well, there's, there's a specific solution for that problem. It's very different from saying we've got a fraud and identity management problem, you know, or identity mm-hmm. theft problem or a customer marketing problem. So it's really important to characterize the type of information solution that you need, what sort of connected intelligence you're trying to enable, and then to build a solution that's appropriate for that, because you want to show returns to the business really quickly. You don't want to have a multi-year project analysis paralysis, that's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, And so your second question, if people want to know more, they can always go to um, uh, our weekly video show, which is, uh, and our, in fact, our our blog, which is Discover Performance. So hp.com slash go slash Discover Performance, which is full of great written and video content, expert opinion on all of these sorts of challenges. Excellent. Okay. Paul, always a pleasure to have a chance to chat with you. It's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me again. Thanks very much. Have a safe trip back home. Thank you. Uh, More coverage coming up here at HP Discover in Las Vegas. Live streaming of SDR news coverage at HP Discover has been made possible by Intel Corporation. Check out Intel Open Port IT, where you can connect with your peers at Intel on industry topics, best practices, strategies, and more. And by Microsoft, where HP and Microsoft are working together, combining their respective strengths to deliver innovative technologies to help advance your business. 